guys this is cash and I'm checking in with you from Frankfurt Germany with ignite thermogenic fat burner this is my little secret to keeping lean and having good energy throughout my busy days while I travel so I want you guys to be sure to check out ignite especially if you're trying to get yourself in shape for this summer Oh, Ignite is gonna get you into bikini body shape. You know, I gotta show you guys a bit of what's going on. Ignite is gonna help you get the results that you want. You're gonna love this product. I certainly do. So I'll put the link down below for the website. Be sure to check them out on Instagram and use my promo code to get great discounts. Check in with you guys soon. Welcome to Chaos Nutrition's Old school training. What are you guys doing? Hey, one of you guys asked me in the talk of smack, is that Obama toilet paper? Right here. I showed you this last time. Yes, it's Obama toilet paper, okay? You wipe your ass with an S. Anyway, let me put it back here. And by the way, let me fix my let me fix my hat. Right here. A little bit. Let me fix my hat. Okay, there we go. Yeah, baby. All right. Now, I'm not sure, but this might be the last uh, old school training video. Probably, I mean, I'm going to be doing more. But what I'm saying is, you might not see it till after the election. So, we're just going to say, I'm hoping that Trump wins. I'm a Trump guy. Because I'm an American, man. I'm all about America. You never see, you never see uh, Joe Biden. They're never like chanting USA. First of all, like, I, I, he doesn't have the rallies, but you never see him chanting USA or USA or any of that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping. But if hey, listen, if Trump loses, what are you gonna do? It's not I can do. All right, I gotta show you this. Look, Billy Martin, New York Yankees, right? The postcard. This is from when he brought him back. Uh, in the, what is it, 70s, whatever, like the whole bunch of postcards, but Yankee Stadium, Yankee Stadium, this is old, man, I got this from the stadium, I was there at Billy Martin Day, now, Billy Martin Day, I don't fucking know when Billy Martin Day was, I don't even remember, but it, you could probably Google it and find out, but I was there at the stadium, I was also at the stadium for uh, Mickey Mantle Day, when they were, you know, when he retired, but anyway, here's an old postcard I got, this is, this is actually old, when, it, when the movie Conan, first came out that Schwarzenegger anyway all right fuck that um here I gotta show you something this is a powerlifting magazine from Russia everybody wants to what are Russian magazines like that's a powerlifting magazine from Russia look they even have you know their own supplement ads on there for a lot of American supplements because I, I'm looking in here man and uh you know, you got all, it's all written in Russian, but, you know, you got all this, like, American supplements and stuff, or supplements that look like America. Is that shit American or not? Yeah, that's, uh, whatever. But, um, 
Look, you know what I like? Russian chicks. Look, when they're blonde like that, and, you know, even though I'm not a big blonde fan, there's something about them because they get that Russian look in their face. They have like a, you know, look at that girl. She's pretty fucking hot, bro. I think that's a Russian power lifter. I'm not sure of her name. Okay. Hold on. Joe Pietaro would love this. This is, look at, this is a Russian power lifter. Look at her. Okay. Joe Pietaro, I know you love that. I do too. Not for nothing. She's hot. Um, I thought, you know, their magazines are, you know, they're, they're, they're legit, you know, they got, uh, some good shit here, uh, but it's funny to see all this shit in, uh, like, you know, they'll say it in CrossFit, they'll say the name CrossFit, but then they got all, like, Russian writing and shit, you know what I mean, like, you know, they'll use the word CrossFit, which is not a Russian name, you know, they'll show that, but then they talk in Russia, so you can't, all the articles are written in Russian, you know what I mean? You know, I'm just looking to see if I can show you so if there's anything else you might find. You know, it's got the standard, you know, just like the old school bodybuilding magazine, Russia, powerlifting magazine. They got, you know, the pictures of all the old powerlifters in Russia and all that stuff, you know. But it's it's funny because they do have, like here, pro bands, right? Like here's their ad for pro bands, okay? It says pro bands. But yet here, it's written in Russian, okay? Right here, do or die is written in English. But down here, it's all written in Russian. Okay, so in all the articles, it'll say American shit. Here's my girl. I'm very good friends with her. Okay, Mariana Novo Novova. Okay, that's her. All right, Mariana. I know her since she's like 12 years old. She's like fucking probably 20 now. But it's it's funny to see, cause they'll have, like for instance, look here. You see, it's written in 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 in, in Russian, and you see the bodybuilders, but then it's all English. Right? It's all in English here. So you'll see Russian there. And then it's funny because all their magazine, you know, the whole magazine's like that. Anyway. Uh, let me see. All that. Right. Okay. Then you got, I love this stuff. Okay, this is my magazine, Muscle Digest. This is Muscle Rock. Remember they had Arnold on there? Well, that's Dennis Tenorino. That's not Arnold. That's Dennis Tenorino. Old school Dennis. Who doesn't remember? Come on, the old ads and shit. Look at the old ads. Look at that bench. They put a chick in front of there. That's, that's the way it should be. I love that stuff. Old school. There's my boy Tom right there. And then look, old school pictures and stuff. But wait. You know, because it brings you back. Look. Wait. Johnny D. This is a good friend of mine. John Defendus. All right. He's He was like, I, I idolized him because I was like the same age as him. Okay. Growing up, and he inspired me. Johnny D, Johnny Defenders. All right? I love Johnny Defenders, man. But there's some good stuff in here. Remember this ad with Arnold? Remember this famous ad with Arnold right there? As a young boy, okay? And then you, get, then you see him there. Look at Arnold. Young kid, Arnold. And then, you know, all this training routine bullshit. Um... But anyway, this is some of the stuff I love, you know. Robbie Robinson beating Danny Padilla. Here, Robbie Robinson beating Danny Padilla. But, you know, according to Robbie, he wasn't given a fair chance because of racism. But, you know, we know how that works out. Okay. Um, you know, all this good stuff. Whoop, wait, 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 Look, here's when the book came out. Remember when the book came out? Right there. The very book that a lot of you guys have all seen. Here's the ad for the book when it first came out. Okay. I love these old magazines, bro. And look. This is another one of the guys that everybody liked. Cal Scalic. I don't remember. I might have showed this magazine. I don't, dude, I don't remember. Whatever. Cal Scalic, bro, he was like a mass monster, and he was super jacked. Cal Scalic, you guys remember that, are you old school guys? You remember Calman Scalic? Look, look what's new, all that sterile gland shit and all that stuff. Remember all this stuff? People, like, really believed all that shit worked. Some of it did work, because it was spiked with steroids. I love, you know, we like stuff when it's spiked with steroids. Tony Pearson before he got his fucking... Tony Pearson, when he won Mr. America, everybody thought he shouldn't have won. Okay. And Ronnie Tufel, right next to him, Ron Tufel. Okay, and then Tony Pearson. That's before he got the facial surgery to look like Michael Jackson. Okay. 
Uh, his structure was great, though. I know Tony. His structure was great. Phenomenal structure, bro. Phenomenal structure. You know? Ray Menser winning right there. Look at his Ray Menser. Look at Ray Menser. Look at him. Ray Menser. Okay. I tell you, that's this 1979. By the way, these pictures I'm showing you, they're from 1979. Um, I mean, I just love all this shit. The, the old school stuff is where it's at. Anyway, my girlfriend's selling this magazine. I'm trying to... Keys to the Inner Universe. All you old school bodybuilding fans. You remember that? Bill Pearl right there. Keys to the Inner Universe. Remember that? Remember that? Great stuff. All right. We're going to pay homage. No, not to Donald Trump. Yeah, well, we do want to pay homage to Donald Trump. We hope he wins. Some of you don't like him. Hey, listen, we're all entitled to our opinions. Right there. Paul DeMeo. Okay? My boy Paul DeMeo. I'm going to make sure this fucking thing is recording me right. Um, we got Paul DeMeo right there. God rest his soul. I got the store brand because they were out of A&W, but I got the straw brand right here, root beer soda, diet, of course, because I'm a diabetic, but I got to keep the whistle wet, you know what I mean? A little, little like, salut! Oh, yeah, baby. Got to keep the throat moist, you know? Got that fucking throat cancer really did a number on me, because they took all of the shit out of my throat, had the mus muscles... Of course, the tonsils, they took that in. And when you're an adult, he was fucking 59 years old when I had the surgery. You know, I'm 60 now, but I'm saying, you know, you had the surgery at 59 years old to take out your tonsils. It was, like, dangerous, you know. Plus, they took out the muscles. They took out fucking tumor that was in there. They took out all this shit out of my throat. They took out fucking lymph nodes out of here. So, you know, I got a voice is a little shot at times. All right, I'm looking for anything else I got to show you. All right, listen. Got my daughter's lacrosse trophies over here. Forget about that. All right. I'll, uh, let's get busy. All right. First question. Oh, by the way, Rocky Marciano right there. The old Rocky. And that's me up there as an Addy bodybuilder. All right. First question. But one of my guys here. Let me make sure his camera's right. Mm, Jerry Ward says, make it square. I don't think he says anymore, but Wilson Lee wants to know, Greg, I'm three years younger than you. I've been lifting uh, 53 years, naturally. Uh, he's saying he didn't start lifting, I guess, until he was in his 50s. Let me, let me read this a little bit better. I'm jacked after just three years of naturally training in my late 50s, and I'm horny all the time. More than in my 40s, he's saying. He's horny more than when he was in his 40s. So I have to release the hostages, which means, that's my, I use that expression, means jerking off. you got to release the hostages, right? The little polywogs in there. I released the hostages about 22 to 24 days out of a month. Good for you. Because listen to me. Jerking off. Or at least ejaculating coming. I'm lucky because I got to fuck with my girlfriend's only, what, 32, 33? I fucking forgot her age. But I've been with her for 15 years now. And, you know, which since she was a teenager. And she's fucking, she's, you know, Latina. And they're fucking horny all the time. So I pretty much have released the hostages pretty much almost every day with her. And if not, I got to fucking release them on my own. Of course, you gotta, it helps you to keep younger. But it keeps you, keeps you younger because you keep your prostate active. When your prostate's not active anymore, you're fucked. But anyway, hold on. Um, so you're saying, I strongly believe in uh, exercises increases the sex drive more than people who, who do not lift. Uh, who are fat and do not lift, he said. Um, I, don't know what I mean, most of my friends who don't weight train it and never had TRT but still uh, kids. Um, they never mentioned the low testosterone. He's saying here, um, I heard that testosterone levels have nothing to do with muscle gain, so why aren't bodybuilders taking them? Well, I think without testosterone, you're not going to make more, you're not going to really, you know, your own natural testosterone, I don't think you're really going to make much gains at all. You know what I'm saying? I, I mean, is it scientifically impossible to not make a muscle gain? Uh, maybe if you, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm it, dude. This is I'm not a scientist, and this is not bro science. This is Momo science, and what that means is we use our own fucking experiences to answer these questions, right? I I feel if you had a zero testosterone level, okay, or like one of like your testosterone levels fifty. I can't imagine you putting on any muscle. I don't see how it's possible, okay? I really don't. 
Uh, I do believe, obviously, even if you ate a lot of protein, I, I, I feel if you eat a lot of protein, okay, and you train really hard, you're going to stimulate your testosterone level. It's, it, I, I think if a guy had zero and you made him get in the gym and you busted his balls every day in the gym and you made him eat really good, which was a lot of protein, okay, more than carbs, you keep that low, I think he would actually increase his muscle mass, okay, just and, and, and raise his testosterone. Now you're, you're kind of asking me a question about why do you need testosterone to build muscles because... Listen, case in point, when you see these bodybuilders, like for instance, what's his name there? Matt Kruk, right? When he started taking estrogen or fucking around or stopped taking it, he shrunk a lot. Now, he's still real built, okay? But I've seen guys that have actually, you know, there's on the internet, there's bodybuilder guys who have transgendered themselves. And they've taken testosterone blockers and, and increased their estrogen. And it, it eats a, any muscle he had is pretty much gone. Kruk is a different, again, because I don't think Kruk totally is on estrogen. Or, I think he still takes testosterone, you know, to a little bit of an extent. Not as much. Maybe that's why he shrunk. But, you know, I, 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 there are plenty of others that you've seen. There's one kid who was actually pretty jacked and he showed him with Jay Cutler. And then he, they show him now he transgendered himself. And he lost every bit of muscle he had. I mean, he's actually thin with no muscle, smooth like a girl, okay, because he stopped his testosterone, okay, he took a testosterone blocker, and he took estrogen. So, what does that have to do with anything? Well, that shows me right there that I believe, it's my belief, it's the Momo science way that we need our testosterone level up. Now, do you, oh, you also brought in your sex drive and all this other shit. You probably have a sex drive because your 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 testosterone and your you know your bound testosterone and your free testosterone are probably pretty on the on the higher side naturally, okay? Because that's what makes even in nature you you know when when he, if you give a male bull testosterone or his testosterone screaming he wants to fuck everything even other male bulls you understand what I'm saying? He's crazy you know and it makes him super aggressive, okay and. That's not roid rage. Being aggressive and be, have roid rage is two different things, okay? You could be aggressive as in gym, gym and, and take no shit and whatever the fuck, but you're not out there kicking people's asses, so don't mix the two up because it's not true, okay? I talked about that before, about the roid rage. But what I'm trying to say to you is I think that there's definitely a correlation between sex drive, testosterone levels, okay, uh, even if you had low testosterone, but you also had low estrogen, okay, I think you'd be, believe it or not, I think your sex drive would be up, but listen, it, 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 you, you have to, the ability to get an erection is a different story. You could take tons, of, I know tons of bodybuilders who take a lot of testosterone, okay, and they can't get a hard on. And usually that's because, you know, you have all different factors when that comes in, okay? Especially like leaky valves in your fucking, in your fucking Pichelli God there. You know what I'm saying? Your dick. So, you know, if, if you have that, the ability to have blood go into chambers of your penis and keep it erect is one thing. Uh, you know, you could be horny and your dick's not working, right? You're like, dude, look at this. I'm, I want to fuck that chick right there. She's laying in bed. Look, she's naked, but my dick's not working. Maybe a wife, whatever. That could be just the ability to get an erection. It's, there's different factors involved. But I still believe that once testosterone hits the brain, it makes a man sex drive go. Okay, this is, I'm talking to Wilson Lee here, by the way. Okay, he's one of my boys. All right, Wilson. So I do believe that there is a correlation for that. And then you're saying you're natty, and that's great. That's, that doesn't mean that you don't have the testo high testosterone level. Okay, your ratios from testosterone to estrogen are probably good. You need some estrogen to have a fucking, you know, to have... Um, you know, have your sex drive, okay, but you're, pretty much your ratios are high, your testosterone is definitely much higher than your estrogen, and you should be good, okay, I have friends who've never taken steroids, and they lift weights mildly, not like a bodybuilder, but they lift weights mildly, my one friend, my childhood friend, and his fucking testosterone is like in the 800s, okay, and he was chubby as a kid and everything, so what I'm trying to tell you is, and he's 61 years old, Okay, 61, he's a year older than me. It's a kid I grew up with. So what I'm trying to tell you is that as long as your testosterone levels, even if you're natural, you don't have to take testosterone. When you take outside testosterone, 
okay? It's a genius. I say it wrong, but listen, okay, outside the body. You're going to get, you're going to get, like, you're going to also raise your estrogen levels. are going to try to creep up to get to that, and that's why guys get bitch shits and all, uh, you know, and the conversion and a whole bit. We already know about all that. I'm not going to get into that because it's different. You know, then we start a whole new fucking speech here. But the bottom line is, if just because you're not on that testosterone, not because you're not taking outside babanya, Okay, you're not sticking the babanya in your ass or wherever. Just because you're not on the babanya doesn't mean that your testosterone levels aren't where they should be and that it's not causing you to gain muscle or, you know, or, or, or have a sex drive. You just said you've gained a lot of muscle in three years and you didn't start working out until you were in 50. So, I think you're okay, Wilson. Um, so, the bottom line is high testosterone levels could be natural, okay, as long as the ratio... Okay, from testosterone to estrogen is good. You should be all right. Working out, eating good will raise your testosterone levels. That's a fact, okay? And, you know, you and I believe that that is a prerequisite to being, you know, sexually, uh, at least sexually aroused or attractive, attracted, okay? You know, you know, your ability to have sex. The problem is, is... You know, if the Bijali God down there is not fucking standing straight up, that could be leaky valve in a penis. It could be a number of things. Okay, there's other reasons for that, but it doesn't. It's not testosterone. Testosterone's not what's filling your dick, making it hard. All right. And the whole coming at least twelve, you know, ejaculating twenty two, twenty four times a month. Uh, that's pretty good because that will keep your prostate active and will keep your prostate young. Remember, use it or lose it, especially old men, when you don't take, you know, when your prostate's in the muscle and it doesn't, it's not active, you're in trouble. All right. All right. Second question. One of my boys on here, great supporter, great guy, Brian Pablo. Thank you, Brian, for uh, always supporting me, too. Okay. As well as Wilson Lee. Voice is getting a little shot. <coughs> Corona. Anyway. All right. Brian's talking to me here a little bit about, uh, you know, okay, saying, uh, from what you said from your videos, you as you get older, you train s smarter, uh, but he's saying that I train at the same intensity, because I always tell people I train the way I did when I was 20. He's also saying, uh, you may have gotten, you may have gotten, have you ever, have you ever seen Ernestine Shepard? If you have, what do you think about her? Because she's uh, she's an, she's eighty something years old or whatever, and uh, he's saying she's uh, she looks incredible. Then he's saying, uh, do, uh, you know, he's saying he's giving me props, saying you know, for me being sixty. But uh, thank you, Brian. Uh, he also says here, um, do you have to be on the babanya? Uh, he's saying, do you, do you have to be on the babanya, which is you know the steroids, the drugs and shit? Okay. Um, you have to be on the babanya to still, you know, look that way when you're older, like to keep your levels up and everything like that. Um, my goal is similar, even though I'm only 37 years old. Uh, he wants to know what, uh, what, what, what my opinion is about that. Like, he basically he's asking about, you know, being young and, 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 you know, being older, but trying to have, be that young person, like, Ernestine Shepard looks f f amazing, so you guys could look her up if you've ever seen her, she's 80 years old, or 80, whatever, and she's got fucking abs, and she's built, and she doesn't look like, any, like, she's not emaciated looking, like, you know, you see some of these guys, like, he's 85 years old, and he looks like, he's got no body fat, is what it is, so he looks a little muscular, but his arms are like 13 inches and ripped, you know, is, Ernestine Shepard's in excellent, excellent shape, you know, her her body is of a fucking 21-year-old, you know, and she's 80, or 80, whatever he says, she's 84, I think he said she's here, but I, I don't think she's 84, I might be wrong, I think she's 80, whatever, maybe he's right, but here's the thing, I took a lot of steroids, you, you guys have to understand that, I took a fuck a lot of steroids, bro, I blasted myself with him, Now I didn't take him for years and years and years, because I got arrested, and that put the kibosh to that, and then I took, you know, I took steroids after that too, but I didn't take, uh, like, what I was doing, but all told, I took a lot of steroids, a lot, and it fucked up, you know, fucks up your body, you, you know, your, your own testosterone gets affected, and all that other stuff, now, 
you know, do you have to take it when you're older to look like these people? To, does Ernestine Shepard take the Babanya? I don't think she does. I, I could be wrong. But she's also not jacked and all that other stuff. She's built and she's got no body fat. I think she's genetic. Okay, it's a genetic freak. You know what I'm saying? And she's got she's got excellent genetics. You're not going to look like that. There's plenty of pro female bodybuilders who still work out, don't compete anymore, stop taking the drugs, and they don't look as good as her. Okay, and they're 20, 30 years younger. Here's the thing. With men, who, especially men who have taken steroids, guys who have taken steroids in the past, um, most of us have to take something as we're a little bit older. You know what I mean? Because just to keep our testosterone, you take a TRT, uh, you know, which is maybe 200 milligrams every 10 days, like I do, you know, something like that. Okay? Or, you know, some guys take it every week. I think, you know, when you start going over 200, 250, or 400, you know, now you're getting into like a little bit, you know, that's a little high to be doing that. And most doctors won't allow you to do that anyway. Because then it's going to push your levels to like ridiculously high and you're not going to be able to do that. You could try to do it on your own, but, you know, you never know what you're going to get. Uh, I feel that men whose testosterone decline is different than women. Okay, on the contrary, as women get older, they seem to gain more testosterone. That's why when older women got hair on their face and they fucking they get hard looking and shit like that, you know, the, the change of life, you know, what they call when they stop getting their period, you know, sometimes they ovaries produce testosterone, believe it or not. Okay, but with men, our testosterone climbs and our estrogen starts to go up. And that's my belief with prostate problems, is that it's not high testosterone, it's high estrogen. Okay. That's why uh, I feel like, you know, when you're, you know, when you're 21 and your testosterone screaming, you don't get fucking prostate cancer, you know. But also I believe in use it or lose it. But here's the thing. I think it's healthy for a man to take TRT when he's older. It, 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 a guy on TRT is not going to make gains like a, like a bodybuilder on, on a regular Bobanya, you know. On, you know, of course TRT is Bobanya because it's testosterone. I hate when guys say, well, I'm not really taking steroids. I'm taking, you know, testosterone therapy. Well, there's a steroid, okay? Don't give me that shit, you know? But I feel that you could still gain, I think it's good to, you know, to take that as you're older, an older guy, especially if you've done it before. Now, you, Brian, you're natural. And let's say when you're 60 one day, you got to get your testosterone levels checked. If your testosterone level's high naturally, you don't need it. I told you. In, a, in the last question, I was just talking about my friend who's 61 years old. A child, a kid I grew up with. My childhood friend, I'm 60. He's 61. I've known him since I was five. Okay? Five years old. He's my friend since I'm five. All right? He's got fun of my kids. I'm got fun of his kids. He's, he's, uh, his testosterone's like 800 and shit like that. Right? It's in the eights. It was just unheard of. You know what I mean? I have another friend who's in his sixties. His, his, his testosterone's in the six six hundreds. You're fine. You don't need you don't need TRT. Okay, if you don't need it, don't take it. But if you've done steroids in the past, a little babanya, a little TRT won't hurt. But you do with a doctor. As you get older, you gotta train smarter. I do train. I train the same way I did. I just train less. Like, I don't train as many days. I take days off here, and it's to recuperate and rest. Because as you get older, you're not going to just drive your body into the ground. But when I do go in into the gym, I go in the gym with a vengeance, and I, I hang and bang. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I was trying to tell you, Brian. So my workout's the same. Frequency is a little bit less because I'm older. you got to eat a little smarter, okay? And those are the things that are going to help you when you get older. You don't have to take hormones. You don't have to do that. Okay, you know, if you're on the babanya, the babanya, if you're really fucking banging in the steroids and you're 60 and, you know, you get older. Well, even Dave Plumbo will tell you, that's a recipe for trouble. Okay, you don't want to kill your liver, you don't want to kill your kidneys, you don't want to do all that shit. All right, uh, you want to give them the least amount of stress possible. And the way to do that is if you don't need the test, don't take it. I need it because I fucking... The ridiculous amounts I was doing. I was doing ridiculous amount of steroids. Ridiculous. You know, I tell you, I was doing 6,000 milligrams of test. I was doing more than that. Way more than that. That's just to the fucking test, uh, cypionate, antony, pro mostly propionate. You know, 
I took three bottles of 200, you know, 200, uh, 10 cc, 200 milligram steroids. Fuck it three times a week, okay? The whole bottle, 10 cc. So that's 30 cc's of that shit. That's 6,000 milligrams, all right? That doesn't count the sustenons. The equipoises, the D-balls, the fucking, there's some, sometimes anadrols, the, the other bullshit I threw in here. And you know you're talking, forget about it. Alright? So I'm a fucking Momo. And now, because all of the, because I took so much Babani before, now I need the TRT. But you may not need it. You gotta go by what your doctor says, what your levels are. And to live a long, prosperous life... I believe you still got to train hard. You still got to, when you get in the gym, you still got to work out. You don't work out like an old man. You just take a little few rest days in between like that. Okay, because you need that. You eat good. And if you need the babani, you take the babani. If you don't need it, you don't take it. There you go. Dude, it's not rocket science. It's not bro science. It's momo science. And the momo science is, we learn from fucking experience. It's, it's, and it's simple. It makes sense, right? You don't need it, you don't take it. You've been doing it your whole life or for years and you really hammered yourself. More than likely, you're going to need it. So you take a small amount. You train hard when you're in the gym. And there you go. All right. All right. Listen to me. Another one of my boys, Matthew LaCory. LaCory. I always say, Matthew, I'm so sorry. I know I'm I, but I'm a fucking guinea from New York, okay? We get everything wrong. We can't say shit right. Liguri. Anyway. Matt, thanks for always supporting me. Now, Matt, I gotta tell you something. The printer, you can see, the printer, I used to write everything out. I can't write it out no more. I still can't read. I read like a 10 year old. Out loud. And, and, and when I read to myself, it's different. But listen, it, it kind of fucked up some of the words here. So I'm just gonna tell you, I'm just gonna say, Matthew wants to know, what's up, Greg? Um, look, that's my phone. Somebody just texted me. See? My flip phone. Right there, baby. Look. Somebody just texted me, and there's your fucking... Oh, shit. Who texted me? Oh. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay. All right. Uh, sorry. And <laughs> my sister texted me. And so Matthew's asking me here. Like, a lot of... He says a lot of supplements. He means the Bobania. Is made underground. Okay. And he says it's probably underdosed. He's saying, what if you get a, a drug like DECA, which is supposed to be 200 milligrams per cc, right, per ml. And you, you want to take 400 milligrams, he's saying, all right. He's saying, should you, to be on the safe side, should you take 600 milligrams so you know you're going to get the 400 milligrams? You see what he's saying? He's saying, should you overshoot it to, get, to make sure that you get that number? Because he's afraid it's underdosed. I wouldn't do that. See, I don't know, because to re believe it or not, there are some that are a little bit overdosed. It's supposed to be 200, it might be 225, okay? Then most of them more than likely are underdosed. The other big problem is, Matthew, is that it's easy to get test. Test is an easy drug to make. Deck is not, okay? So what happens is, is these fucking guys are ripping labels off of test. And they're putting DECA labels on it. You follow what I'm saying? So you might actually be taking DECA, uh, testosterone, when you think you're taking DECA. And you're adding more test to your already. You take a test already. Gabish, You hear me? So, we don't know. Alright? We don't know. We don't know. It's not good to take... That's why I'm against this underground shit, but I'm not going to fight with you guys about that. Oh, I, I've had it tested, and it's legit, and all, whatever. Okay, good. Good for you. All right? God bless you. But still, it's common that if you're taking fake shit, that not only could be underdosed, but it might not be the shit you're taking at all. Do you understand? It might not be the shit you're taking at all. Because DEC is one of those drugs that's not easy to make. It's easy to make fucking trend because you fucking get the pellets, you throw them, do all this bullshit to make your own trend, you know, uh, you, you know, to, to fit and all that bullshit. And testosterone is a cheap drug to make, but DEC is not. And DEC is forever, even when I was young, you know, taking a young meaning in my fucking late 30s, even when I was doing this shit, 
I got it from a fucking legit source. I was getting American shit to Stavros. But there was a lot of fake deck all around. There was a lot of testosterone. They pull a label off testosterone. And, you know, even when I sold the drugs. And I got wholesale prices. Deca was three times, you know, two to three times. Uh, if I can't remember all the prices. But two to three times. More expensive than test. And I was getting, you know, I was getting test ridiculous amounts. You know, like $8 a bottle and shit like that. Of legitimate steroids test. Okay. And then we'd sell for 50 or whatever the fuck, you know. And then, you know, to drug deals. And they would sell for 100 But whatever. But the, the deck was a different animal. And I'm going to be honest with you. You don't want to take fucking 600 milligrams of DECA. There's like a fucking cutoff. There's a weird thing with DECA. Okay. Everybody genetically different the way you absorb, your, your, you know, the way you metabolize your, your drug and everything. But with DECA, there's something about that number. That once you go over 400, it just, your prolactin just fucking kicks in. And that's where the bitch tits and problems start. Over the 400. It just seemed, on the average guy. Now, there's some guys that could take 600. And that's, it starts there. Nobody I know could take 800 or, or more. Or, you know, over 600. And still fucking, and not get no fucking prolactin problems or fucking bitch tits, whatever. It happens. Don't give me none of your bullshit. I don't give a shit what you say. I'm telling you from experience. <clears throat> and if you tell me now, 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 it's because you're not taking real shit. All right? I'm telling you that DECA is safe. The best gains are around 400. You keep it at 400 and you're going to make a good solid gain. And your prolactin level shouldn't, shouldn't. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have prolactin problems. And it doesn't mean that you are. Everybody's different. Some guys get bitch tits. Some guys don't. Some guys have that problem with deca dick. That's why we don't want prolactin. It's the deca dick. And deca dick might come in a little bit over the 400 mark. You start getting that fucking piece of legal. It ain't going to fucking stand up anymore. Okay? If that don't bother you, oh, it doesn't work on me. I'm the opposite. That's because you're taking tests. Thinking it's deca. Dude, so it's what prolactin does, bro. It fucks up the piece they got, okay? So, anyway. So, Matt, I hope that answers your question. I wouldn't go higher. I just try to get legitimate sources, to be honest with you. Or I'd rather be underdosed with the DECA anyway than be overdosed. And make sure it's not test. Because that's a fucking drug. They, spy, they fake. They fucking cocksuckers. They, you dirty rat fucks that stand there and you rip the fucking labels off of something and you put another label on you cocksucker. I'd rather it just be regular fucking dead oil than you taking a drug that has, you know, you know, some of you might be like, I don't care, it's more test for me. No, dude. If you're taking test already, that throws off the fucking shit. I don't give a fuck. That's a rat fucking. If you're one of those guys that do that, fuck you. I don't like guys that do that shit, bro. That's a sneaky peep, man. I don't like that. Hey, next question. Natty Tom wants to know, Greg, when you were young and Natty, how did you gain size in the off season? How did you bulk up without the babanya? You guys like that word, don't you? You guys are all using my words now. Now listen to me. When I look like that, I was fucking 19 years old anyway, so I was fucking no steroids, nothing. I look fucking damn good, bro. Okay, I I used to fatten up. We didn't know any better. Okay, we didn't know. And that's the old school way. Eat a lot of food. Almost like fatten up. Just gain weight. I used to, there's a fucking story I've told before, but I used to take this, I used to make what's called cake shakes. I used to take like fucking heavy cream, throw ice cream in it, even sugar. I didn't give a shit because I was trying to gain, gain weight. But I would take this big fucking triple four four layer fucking cake. You country epicure used to make. It was a big fucking cake like you get in a fucking. Uh, they make it for restaurants, you know. I think it had four layers. I don't remember. But it was chocolate cake. I'd take a slice this big with all the layers like that, and I'd fucking put it in his blender, and I'd mix it up with the fucking you know half and half or heavy cream. I throw all kinds of shit in there, bananas, fucking everything in there, you know fucking cup of protein, but I try to, it would be like fucking drink, I drink a fucking thing like this, like a gallon of it, I'd throw, sometimes I'd even throw eggs in there, <coughs> Rugs. bro, I would drink that shit, and my gut would be sticking out fucking like, you know, like I'm pregnant, you know, till I digested it all, alright, and you shit your brains up, but I'm gonna tell you something, I used to take even sometimes throw nutriments in there. If I couldn't have like heavy cream or or, or, uh, or half an apple, I would open up a can of nutriment. Remember that? Nutriment. 
I would throw that in there with the fucking cake. So I used to make these things. I, I called them cake shakes. All right? And, bro, let me tell you something. I used to make carb bombs. I called them carb. Not car. Carb bombs. I would make a big, giant baked potato, and I'd mash it up, right? And then I'd throw, like, two cups of rice, cooked rice in there. And I'd throw that in. I'd throw Italian gravy on there. Sauce. Spaghetti sauce. I call it gravy. I throw that in there, and I'd mix it all together, and I'd eat that like a fucking, and it'd be a big bowl. And, you know, you're talking about fucking thousand grams of carbs, you know. I did that. I actually gained a pound a day at one point. Now, you're saying, that's all fat. You're right. I fattened up, and then I dieted all down. But when I dieted, I dieted it slow, and I trained really hard, and I didn't lose a lot of strength, and I kept my mass. Now, I don't recommend you guys doing it. I was naive, you know, you're talking the 1970s and shit, and early, like maybe 80, the latest, you know. But that's what I would do. I'd eat a lot of food, and then I'd bring it down slow, like that. You understand? I would die for like 20 weeks, and I'd bring it down really slow, and I'd be left with a lot of mass. Most guys back then used to fatten up, then cut it down, gain a lot of weight, and then slowly peel it off. And, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's a pain in the ass losing the fat, but you, you usually were left with some good muscle, especially when you're young. You know what I mean? When you're young, dude, you could you could do anything. I lost the fatter easily. I was lucky, you know? Um, I remember I used to eat before contests. I would eat, like, so much, like, salad, you know, because it helps you shit, and it fucking fills you. I would eat so much salad, but i just put vinegar on it. Then my lips were getting pickled. You know what I mean? They actually got pickled. You know? They were getting like all oh, like sore and shit, you know? Because I would eat so much of it. But anyway, that's how I died it off. Anyway, I, you know, you diet it just like you diet now. You know, I, you know, I would on low carbs and pretty much, you know. Back then, people had high carbs. But when you were trying to really peel that fucker weight off to keep your carbs low and your fats low, it was basically eating lean protein, you know? But I did it slow. I gained the weight, and I did it slow. Cut, you bulk up, cut down. Bulk up, cut down. Dude, back then, you got to remember, it was shit like, uh, well, this is way after, way after. But you had gainers fuel and shit like that. I was already like 30 when that shit came out. But, you know, gainers fuel. What do you think gainers fuel and all those weight gain powders were? They were just fucking protein with like fucking sugar in it. You know what I mean? How many grams of carbs were in that shit? Nobody takes that stuff anymore. You name a pro bodybuilder that takes those weight gain powders. None of them do. I don't even know if they make weight gain powders anymore. They probably do. But, you know, that's what I did. Hey, look at Rich Piana. He was thrown in in a blender. What? He'd throw egg whites in there. He'd throw fucking peanut butter in there. Cocoa pebbles in there. You know, um, apple sauce in there. Maybe a banana. Whatever the fuck he threw in there. Carbohydrate powder. Throw it in there. So I was doing the same thing, but I was we didn't have all that when I was a kid. There was no such thing as carb powders. There wasn't even amino acids. There were protein pills by Hoffman. Okay, they were like chalk pills. All right? You go you old school guys know what I'm talking about. We didn't have any of these supplements these guys have today. There was weight gain powder and protein powder, you know? He had lecithin and the, the fucking desiccated liver shit like that. I tried that all on it. Blend it up, bang, drink it. So I basically ate enough food that I Gained that weight, and then I slowly carved out. Because Arnold, you know, I had that whole fucking mindset with Arnold used to say in Pumping Iron. You start out with a lot of clay, you know, keep slapping on the clay, and then you just peel it, you slowly carve it away. And that's what my mindset was. I'm going to put on the clay, I'm going to peel it away. That's how I did it in the 70s. All right? There you go. Plus, I don't think any of you young guys should be taking steroids anyway. You've had hair in your dick. You're 19 years old, dude. You've had hair in your dick. What, four or five years? You got a little hair and you be surely God down there? And you think now you need to take steroids? When you're older, you're going to be fucked. But that's neither here nor here. A lot of you don't want to hear that. All right. As listen, that's it. I got I to gotta run. I got shit to do. The voice is, is like going. I got to take a swig right here. Look. A little root beer. A little diet root beer. From where I live is shop. Stop the shop. I don't really shop there much, but... There you go, okay? I used to have A&W. They didn't have any. Either Mug, A&W, Bargs. They didn't have any. Stewart's Diet. It's got to be Diet Root Beer. So they didn't have any. So now i got to take the store brand, which isn't bad. Tastes the same to me.
Oh, shit. Hold on. You gotta wipe it off. I'm fucking, you wipe it on your fucking sleeve. I'm a, I'm a guinea from New York. That's what we do. All right, guys. All right, listen to me. Go out and vote. Vote Republican. Uh, go out and vote. All right, we hope. Uh, look, whoever wins, there's nothing we can do. You gotta go with it, and that's it. You gotta just hope for the best. All right? Go out and vote. Hopefully this corona bullshit will end that, you know, I'm, you know, t Trump keeps telling everybody, and he's right, when he says, well, we're testing more people. We're testing more people, so that obviously we got more positive results. He's right about that, but he's, he's forgetting him. He needs me to help him out, because I, believe me, forget about it. He's forgetting that half the fucking numbers that you see are wrong, because they're, they're giving out positive tests to people who haven't even took the test. They're giving out positive tests. My belief is that they, they're because all of a sudden now they're saying the flu didn't hit in Australia. I'm going to talk more about this and talk a smack. I'm just going to touch about it here though. The flu didn't hit in Australia. No, they had no flu. 98% gone. The flu. Okay. Because they already had their winter. And wherever, even South America, no flu. Gone. The flu didn't go nowhere. You're just. Anybody's got the flu now, you go to your doctor, you got a little bit of cough, a little bit of sore throat, maybe sneeze a little bit, and you got a little bit of the flu, they're going to say, oh, it's COVID. Because they, every time they put in, the, the, the companies that are doing the COVID tests are making billion, billions, not millions, billions of dollars, okay, off these COVID tests. So once COVID goes, they're out of money. So they're going to want to keep the positive results coming. So you got the flu, ah, it's, it's corona. How do you think Baron Trump, he had, a fucking, he had it for one day, it was even Donald Trump. I knew he was taking new medicine and stuff. But what do you have, three days? You know what I mean? It's because I believe it's the flu. I believe that they're fucking giving all these false positive things. That's part of my opinion. I could be wrong. You know what I mean? And the other thing is, is that they're giving a lot of people. It's people, you know, every time you test, if you do test positive for corona, you got you to gotta keep taking a test until you're negative. That's how, you, you know, you're cured. Okay? So you take the test. Three days later, two days later, you take a test again. Let's say it takes you five tests until you get a negative test. All five of them count as a case of corona. So now, you're counted as five, if you took five positive tests, that means, until you got your negative test, that means that they're going to add that in the national bank as five cases of corona. So half this, these numbers are not accurate. They're not accurate at all. Okay? I won't get into that. We'll talk more about that and talk a smack. I'm just telling you guys, hopefully after the selection day, everything will go back to normal. Fuck the mask bullshit and all that stuff. You got to wear it. You got to wear it. Does it help? It helps a little bit. It's going to help you from spitting when you're talking. That's what it's going to help for. I keep talking to people. Hundred Now I got 100 cases of these fucking people talking to me. I can smell their breath through the goddamn. Their breath stinks. And I can smell through the mask. And if, they, if their breath is coming out of the mask and that smell is going in my nose, it means somehow or other their breath particles are coming in my fucking face. Okay? It's not going to stop anything. It's not airborne. If it was airborne, then we'd be like the plague at the 1300s. We'd be fucked. But for now, train at the gym. You got to wear a mask. Wear the mask. You got a moment, you pop the fucking mask down. You breathe. You do whatever you got to do. Turn your fucking back to the fucking cameras or whatever when nobody's looking. You put the mask down. Go get a breath. Do whatever you got to do. This will pass. If Trump gets in, it's going to pass real quick. If he don't get in and Biden gets in, expect more shutdowns. Your gym may be shut down. And then they're going to shut it down permanently because they can't afford to keep open, reopening it. And we got problems. But for now, don't panic. Stop fucking banging your head against the wall. Ride the wave. Okay, Jeff Spicoli. All I need is a cool breeze and a strong wave. You know what I mean? Ride the wave and you'll be good. Okay? Gabish. All right, guys. Listen, man. Be good to your girls. Be good to your wife. Be good to your significant other. What did we learn? We learned that we're all a bunch of fucking momos, all right? We learned if you don't need TRT, you don't take it. But more than likely, if you want to live to be, you know, older and shit like that, and you're down and test, you take it. You, we also learned that uh, if your sex drive's low, you know, 
uh, I, I, there is definitely a correlation between your testosterone and your sex drive. You don't have to have high testosterone, but it has to be in a right ratio with your estrogen. If your estrogen is higher than your testosterone, your dick ain't going to get hard, okay? We learned that. We also learned, uh, what else we fucking learned? We also learned that if you're going to try to underdose your steroids, if your steroids are underdosed because you're buying it from fucking, uh, you better get a better source. But a lot of people fucking fake DECA. They, they take testosterone label, they rip the label off of a testosterone bottle and put a DECA label on it. Because DECA is a much more complicated drug to make than testosterone. And I don't care what some of you got. No, that's not true. Yeah, it is true. Okay. So this is what we're learning, okay? We learned all this bullshit. What's the last thing we fucking learned here? What was the other bullshit here? Oh, by Natty. What did I do? I fattened up, died down. Fattened up, died down. That was this. We asked me what we did in the 70s. That's how we did it. With no steroids. We ate a lot, but then we chiseled out. It all came from Arnold Schwarzenegger saying in a movie, Pump and Iron, you know, you got a lot of clay, you slap on all the clay, and then you carve it out slowly. All right? That's what we did. That's the way. Dude, this isn't rocket science. It's not bro science. It's normal science. All right? I love you guys, man. Be good to your girl. Be good to your wife. Pay your fucking child support. Don't be a deadbeat dead. I don't like that shit. Then you get the fuck off my channel. Don't come back. But for now, stop fucking around. Keep your chin up. Keep your fucking chin up. You're going to be good. Everything's going to be all right with this corona shit. Keep your chin up. Ride the wave. Go out and vote. And remember, let's 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 make America great again, again, like Trump says. Hey, listen to me. My sister, my sister knows Donald Trump. Her husband is one of his personal security guards. Okay, one of his personal way before he was ever president. He's been one of um, my sister's husband's worked for him for like twenty five years. He still works for him. And he works for Eric mostly. He guards Eric, you know, a lot. But regardless, I'm just telling you. And Donald Trump's been very good to my sister. I should go to my brother-in-law. Anyway, stop fucking around. See you in the next video.